Welcome to Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, May 3rd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Marissa Mayer is the former CEO of Yahoo, an early employee and first woman engineer at Google, and now the CEO and co-founder of Sunshine. Sunshine is a startup that builds apps to automate everyday tasks and helps people manage their contacts. It does this in part by using artificial intelligence, something Mayer, who has two degrees focused on the subject, knows a lot about. During the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything Festival, she sat down with WSJ Life and Work coverage chief Nikki Waller to discuss AI and sunshine. Here are highlights from their conversation. You were interviewed a while back and you had a great quote and you said, if technology can drive a car, how come it can't organize my contacts or make Mm -hmm. scheduling easier? It's a great observation. I think a lot of us feel the same way. <laughs> well, and if we, we've talked to a lot of different people in terms of how their day-to-day goes. And if you ask people, you know, when was the last time you wanted to do something with someone or for someone and why didn't you? A lot of times it's just because it's too hard. So for us, we're starting with contacts. We have aspirations of what we want to do in terms of going on to help people and manage groups more easily, events, lots of different kind of everyday mundane tasks. And how does AI play into this? Sure. Uh, well, AI is obviously having an incredible moment, and generative AI is is a, a big part of that. In our world, just like there's a lot of different things that have human judgments and the need for human judgments, um, and I think. People haven't really thought about how do you apply AI to these everyday tasks, like scheduling, like contact management. We actually just implemented uh, two nice enhancements that involve AI uh, just last week. One is looking at profile pictures, different pictures, but you can tell that it's the same person. Can we actually deduplicate based on that? And business similarities, right? When you're trying to basically, in an automated way, organize someone's contacts, people write uh, their company names lots of different ways. so, you know, is it Facebook or is it Meta? And actually being able to take AI and say, okay, we can train a model over time. And for the big cases, it's easy just to special case them. But if you really want to do it purely, you can actually do, build a really good model with AI that does a much better job than, than people and takes a lot of that main mundane, yes, these are the same work out of, out of it. And, you know, it, it's so interesting to hear about this. How do you get users who are so, so part of the way that Sunshine works is by ingesting your contacts and even potentially getting access to your email. How do you persuade users to sign on who might be wary of privacy or, or handing over data? Well, we do have a privacy pledge. We really believe very firmly that people's contact data is obviously incredibly personal and private, and people are really guarded about it. So we, it belongs to them, and that's our view. Uh, we're just simply helping to, uh, to organize it. So that said, I will say there's a lot of people. I have, I've now talked to several thousand people, and I haven't met one where they're just like, I'm great. My contacts are in perfect shape. <laughs> um, I, have, I have no need for any help here. Um, because you know, usually everyone has a different kind of mess, but you've got people who have first names, no last names, lots of misspellings based on meeting people at conferences. People generally have, if they realize they want help with their contacts, they're usually pretty happy. You know, it's undeniable that the tech sector right now is more anxious than it has ever been probably at just about any point in its history. How is it being a founder in this environment right now? Uh, well, I will say it definitely stretches you. Uh, there's always a lot of different demands. Uh, when I've talked with other founders, the number of things that you have to go from knowing nothing about to being an expert in <laughs> that may or may not be related to your core business is high, right? We all had to become, you know, we all had to have a crash course in epidemiology. Then we all had to have a crash course in, you know, insured deposits and banking earlier this year. And so the number of times when you're just like, wow, I didn't know anything about this on a Wednesday, and by next Monday, I need to know it well enough to make good decisions, well enough to talk about it with our company. On the on the flip side, I think that that given what's happening with AI at the moment, I think there's a lot of, there's just so much idea generation, right? I saw an interesting tweet back in February where everyone's like, wow, like there's been very few products in history that have caused, you know, pretty much every founder to reconsider their product and business plan in the first 60 days of a calendar year. Uh, and so I think that, um, you know, that it's been, it's been a fascinating time. And I think we're going to see a lot of interesting change and progress quickly. How has that affected Sunshine? Because you've been around for a couple of years in stealth mode. Mode, um, and beta, and, and it's you, 
have an AI startup essentially? Is that causing more people to call you? Are you getting more inbound? What's the conversation like? Uh, I think that it, there's just a lot of excitement. What can we do with it? What 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 works well? What doesn't work well? Right? Everyone's up. You know, as we, um, our business name Similarity actually uses Open AI <laughs> API, so it's actually really fun for the engineers to experiment with how much data do you need? How much data do you need to make the model at, to perform at this accuracy or at that accuracy? Uh, and so I think you know overall there's just been a ton of excitement uh, in terms of what of what can be done. You know, you've always been passionate about the consumer web, um, and it feels right now that a lot of consumer web applications end up tethering us to our phones more rather than liberating us. Is there a way that AI um, or even apps like yours can make us less dependent on our phones? I think both Sunshine and uh, AI can make us less dependent on our phones. You know, we're all just spending too much time on our phones, and uh, people, you know, and especially there's Lots times when it's really agreement there, there's but. times when it's lot when they're you know in, when it's merited but there's also times where you're like wait like I shouldn't have to be you know messing with my calendar messing with my contacts fumbling around looking for a number it should just work uh, and kind of taking that cruft away is something that's 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 really important and I think that AI is going to take away a lot of mundane tasks uh, from from people and hopefully free people up to spend more time creatively, spend more time with the, with the people they want to spend time with, um, and, and just more meaningfully on relationships as opposed to all of the logistics. Marissa, you have two degrees in artificial intelligence. We're all here to talk about the future. Um, with generative AI, how's this going to shake out? Are you are you a utopian? Are you a pessimist? Where do you think it's headed? Um, I think you have to be somewhere in between. Uh, I think that. I, I think I personally think I'm mean, obviously a tech optimist, and so I think that there's going to be amazing things that come out of the generative AI movement and AI in general. That's why I've been so interested in, in my whole career. I don't think you can just go blindly in, into developing AI. Um, I, I think there are some dangers there. That said, overall, I'm hugely optimistic about what it can do for, for people and for humanity. Marissa, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thanks on behalf of the audience. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.